Now, whether in the form of competitive party games that can be enjoyed alongside friends or small side activities within expansive RPGs, minigames can be a fun method of injecting various new ideas to mix up gameplay in interesting and new ways. Sometimes a minigame will actually be so good that players will spend more time playing that than the main story. With The Witcher 3's Gwent and The Evil Within 2's incredibly addictive chain attack challenge being just some examples, other times though a minigame can appear that's so frustrating and unenjoyable to play that players will do everything in their power to avoid interacting with them as much as feasibly possible. But unfortunately, sometimes there are achievements that tie to them. So yeah, better get playing. And let's get on with it then. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 infuriating minigames that cost you 100%. Number 10, Digi-Picking Starfield. Despite being known for their expansive and immersive RPGs, Bethesda likewise have a habit of filling their titles with some pretty lousy minigames. Whether it was the broken persuasion system in Oblivion or the tedious block-based puzzles in Fallout 4's Far Harbor DLC, there are a handful of blemishes throughout Bethesda's otherwise stellar catalogue of games. Starfield likewise suffered from the developer's need to incorporate a terrible minigame into this galaxy-faring adventure, and this time it was digi-picking. A brand new mechanic from the studio, digi-picking replaces is how players would normally pick locks and hack in Bethesda games. The minigame tasks players with solving a puzzle by correctly matching a series of pins with slots on a circle. Clear each ring and players will succeed. However, the game never properly explains how this new mechanic works. The first few dozen attempts consequently become a series of trial and error guesswork until players either figure it out or give up in frustration. Even after deciphering how this mechanic functions, investing in the security skill is the only way to make the harder puzzles more manageable. Unfortunately though, players will need to wrap their heads around this mechanic to unlock the cyber jockey achievement by unlocking 50 locks. Number 9. The Shooting Gallery Resident Evil 4 2023 much like the 2018 remake of Resident Evil 2, the modern iteration of Resi 4 was a phenomenal game which puts a new spin on the classic horror action title while enhancing the aspects that made it so great in the first place. And one part of the original that was revamped for the remake was the shooting range. An optional pirate-themed distraction that can be accessed at specific merchant locations throughout the game, the shooting range puts your sharpshooter skills to the test with a series of tricky challenges. And there are a handful of achievements tied to this minigame, the most fiendish of all, however, is Real Deadeye, which requires the player to achieve an S rank in each of the 12 games. Earning these coveted high scores is far easier said than done, though. Mastering all the courses requires players to know the movements of each target down to the second, and where the bonus targets are hidden and how to best utilize each of the weapons to reach the bonus round. Every bullet counts when it comes to completing the shooting gallery, and it's going to take hours of practice to learn each challenge well enough to earn this achievement. Number 8. Bamboo Strike – Ghosts of Tsushima Whenever players aren't fighting the invading Mongolian forces in Ghosts of Tsushima, they can explore the beautiful island to discover the extra challenges scattered throughout its luscious scenery. Throughout their travels, players follow adorable foxes to hidden shrines, bathe in hot springs, compose elegant haikus, and absorb tranquil surroundings. But one less relaxing inclusion that players can engage with is the Bamboo Strike minigame. Scattered throughout each of the island's main regions, this activity requires players to cleanly slice through bamboo by memorizing and then quickly inputting button prompts that appear on screen. Somewhere between a memory and rhythm game, completing these challenges is no easy task. They require a keen level of dexterity and accuracy to enter the button combination in the small window of time that players are given, with the challenge intensifying as the number of presses increases from 3 to 7. Though difficult, tackling these challenges is actually worth all the effort they take, because completing each of the 16 bamboo strikes will increase Jin's resolve, which makes the tougher fights far more manageable. Master Mastering all bamboo strikes is also required to achieve the mind, body, and spirit trophy. Number 7. Fishing – Stardew Valley whether it's Sea of Thieves, Red Dead Redemption 2, or Far Cry 5, there's no shortage of blissful fishing minigames out there that act as peaceful distractions that players can lose hours of their time playing. But one example of a fishing minigame that causes more irritation than relaxation, however, is Stardew Valley. Despite its calming gameplay loop of farming crops and chatting to the locals, the fishing part of this game is surprisingly fiendish. After casting the line in the water and getting a bite, the aim is to keep a green bar over a fish icon. Keeping the icon within 
spin the bar will fill the meter on the screen, and filling the meter will result in a successful catch, while letting it drain to zero will see the fish escape. The difficulty stems from the speed at which the fish icon can move around, especially when players start with a small green bar, and it can take players a lot of time to get to grips with this mechanic. With some practice and studying of the game's wiki to know where and when to find rarer fish, players will be equipped to catch every fish and receive the Master Angler Trophy and its in-game rewards for their efforts. Number 6. Traditional Dancing – Like a Dragon Ishin a part of the Yakuza series' charm is its selection of wacky side activities. From singing in karaoke bars to competing in go-kart races, there's no shortage of things for players to do in these games outside the main story, and Like a Dragon Ishin is no exception. Alongside its gripping and pulpy crime narrative, this spin-off title set in the 19th century Kyoto featured myriad activities like chicken racing, rock, paper, scissors, and cooking to keep players busy. They could even manage their own farm. Another addition was traditional Japanese dancing. Though seeing the hardened protagonist gracefully perform elegant moves was an amusing concept, playing through the selection of songs was less than satisfying in execution thanks to a steep difficulty curve and pretty unintuitive layout. Unlike most rhythm games where the button prompts scroll across the screen, this game puts the prompts for the face buttons and D-pad on either side of the screen. As the notes come thick and fast on harder songs, players could easily become overwhelmed while trying to watch both sides simultaneously. Although dancing wasn't necessary to beat the game, players would need to complete all three performances to earn the Lord of the Dance achievement. Number 5. Blitzball – Final Fantasy X Remaster Final Fantasy X was an incredible game when it originally released in 2001, and was made even better when the HD remaster hit PlayStation 3 and Vita over a decade later. Alongside an epic plotline and fast-paced combat, improved visuals and a remix soundtrack, and extra gameplay, new life was breathed into this classic RPG that both new and old fans could appreciate. But despite all these new features and enhancements, the remake still forced players to endure the much maligned sport of Blitzball, a game in which opposing players swim in a giant sphere of water and score points by throwing a ball into the other team's goal, Blitzball was intended to add some world building to the area in much the same way that Gwent did to The Witcher 3. But unlike that addictive card game though, Blitzball was an absolute chore to play sometimes. In addition to grinding the story to a halt so Tidus, even though his name should be Tidus, can compete in a tournament, terrible AI made playing the sport more about pure luck than actual skill. Unfortunately though, if you did want to complete it all, you'd need to endure hours more of this tedious sport to unlock all four of Wacker's overdrive slots by winning tournaments. Though Blitzball has its supporters, there was nothing enjoyable about unlocking that particular trophy. Number 4. Scorpion Extermination – No More Heroes from its hyperbolic levels of blood-gushing violence to its comically over-the-top plotline and fourth-wall-breaking humour, No More Heroes is far from being a serious game. Throw in a list of challenging and creative boss fights, and this is a title that proved to be an absolute blast to play. But a substantially less appealing part of this cult favourite, though, was completing side-job minigames in order to earn the privilege of playing the next main mission. Ranging from grass-cutting, picking up litter and cleaning graffiti, each of these tasks felt like much more busy work than their name suggested. And the worst of all, though, was Scorpion Extermination. This minigame saw players run around a large field to remove an infestation of poisonous scorpions within a time limit. While finding the critters within such a big space is an annoyance of its own, the main problem was getting stung. If that happened, players only had a matter of seconds to make it back to the job supervisor to receive the antidote. Things only got exponentially worse when attempting to earn the gold medal by collecting 15 of these horrible critters. But if you brave earning a gold medal in each job, players will unlock the part-time job master achievement. Number 3. Building Cairns – Assassin's Creed Valhalla from the lackluster den defense in Revelations to the complex hacking puzzles in Black Flag, the Assassin's Creed series has a long history of squeezing in unnecessary and, let's face it, unenjoyable minigames into their otherwise exhilarating action outings. While an incredible and epic adventure, Assassin's Creed Valhalla likewise fell victim to Ubisoft's terrible minigames, and this time it came in the form of cairn puzzles. Found on top of high peaks, the goal of these activities is to carefully stack rocks so that they reach a certain height. And while you're doing this, flashbacks of your protagonist's childhood memories of building them with his parents play in the background. These are meant to be meditative experiences, but when the slightest movement can send this tower of rocks tumbling to the ground, these puzzles caused way more frustration than anything else. While it only takes completing three of these to unlock the equilibrium achievement, players will need to build them all and endure hours of stress to complete every territory in the game and acquire the completionist all the way achievement. 
Number two, Eating Ramen, Wanted Dead. Made by developers who previously worked on Ninja Gaiden, Wanted Dead is an extremely strange game that's on its way to becoming a modern cult classic. Alongside undertaking a collection of main missions that see players shoot and slash their way through hordes of enemies, the game also includes a handful of wacky sequences, like performing in a karaoke rendition of Europop favourite 99 Luftballons. While this bizarre concoction of gameplay ideas is never particularly fun to experience thanks to lacklustre action and horrendous voice acting, none of those aspects compare to a rhythm-based minigame that sees players try to eat as many bowls of ramen as they can. Although this sounds like an amusing concept, the execution is anything but. Each track is incredibly difficult and lasts for a mind-numbing seven minutes. While it's possible to mostly ignore this minigame, completionists will need to finish a track perfectly to achieve the Ramen World Legend achievement. Earning this achievement is a maddening test of endurance and patience in which the tiniest mistake can ruin an attempt. And with randomized button prompts, it's not even possible to memorize the sequence. I tell you, completing Rock Band 2's Bladder of Steel award would actually be easier and more pleasant to do than this. And number one, the asteroid shooting segment from the original Dead Space. Now, whereas most of the minigames on this list can be completely ignored if desired, the asteroid shooting sequence from the original Dead Space definitely cannot. Encountered at the end of Chapter 4, engineer Isaac Clarke must protect the Ishimura from an asteroid shower. However, with the auto-targeting system broken, they must destroy the asteroids manually using an ADS cannon. After spending a handful of hours dismembering the limbs of necromorphs by this point in the game with carefully placed shots, players will be pretty familiar with the game's excellent shooting mechanics. Unfortunately, no amount of alien evisceration can prepare you for what is about to come. The asteroids bombard the ship incessantly to the point that staying on top of the barrage becomes near impossible. While increasing the brightness can definitely help with spotting the targets coming, players will still require fast and accurate reflexes if they mean to progress further in the game. And if this sequence wasn't cruel enough already, players will have to survive the ordeal without the hull integrity dropping below 50% to unlock the Don't Be Cocky Kid achievement. Being obliterated by asteroids would be a better fate than gunning for that achievement, and thankfully though, this section was vastly improved for the 2023 remake.